Hi, I'm Mark Tekip, and I'm the RF Engineering Manager at Ethereos. In case you're not familiar with us, we're a wireless design services firm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we have over 50 engineers focused on wireless product development. One of the main technologies used for this is cellular, because with cellular, devices can connect from almost anywhere without any other infrastructure, and data costs have fallen significantly. But designing a product with cellular is hard. There's numerous barriers to entry, and there's a complex certification process that you have to go through in order for the main network operators like AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon to allow you on the network. So what's it take to design a cellular product? Let's go down to the wireless lab to take a look. Because of the huge demand we've seen for cellular, we've made significant investments in wireless test equipment. With this equipment and our RF engineering team that knows how to drive it, we're actually able to guarantee that the designs we do will pass cellular certifications on the first try. Behind me is one of our three main test setups that we use for cellular testing. This is a cellular base station simulator. We have five of them and brand new, each one costs as much as a small house. It's absolutely critical when designing and testing new cellular products. It allows us to simulate a cellular tower from AT&T, Verizon, or Sprint and make critical performance measurements. This box here is called an anechoic chamber. It's essentially a large shielded box that allows us to isolate the device that we're testing from all of the wireless noise and signals that are going on all around us. Without it, things like Wi-Fi access points, cellular phones, and even the local radio station would interfere with the sensitive measurements that we're trying to make. In order for cellular designs to work well in the field and be able to pass certifications, they have to be able to listen to very quiet signals. One of the challenges in cellular designs is that noise generated from other electronics in the device can emit noise that interfere with the cellular communications. One of the uh, analogies here would be if you're in a large room and there's a lot of people talking around you in loud voices and you're trying to listen to somebody at the other side of the room. So one of the main tools that we use to help troubleshoot those issues is called a spectrum analyzer. This is the spectrum analyzer to my left. And the spectrum analyzer allows us to measure and identify where the sources of noise are coming from in a design, and so we can accurately troubleshoot them. One of the most common points of failure in a cellular design is the antenna. In order to test antennas, we have another piece of equipment called a network analyzer. Network analyzers allow us to test your product, whether you're using an off-the-shelf or a custom antenna, um, and make sure that the antenna is gonna work properly in your design. While I focused on a few key pieces of cellular equipment, our wireless lab is stocked with everything necessary to simulate, design, and test all of the leading wireless standards, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, Zigbee, or other ISM radios. I've shown you a lot of high-ticket lab equipment, but it's not just about having the right equipment. It's about having the right people who know what to look for and how to drive things efficiently. With over 50 projects on the floor at any given time, we use these tools every day. Our cellular expertise, collaborative environment, and world-class partnerships with the leading cellular certification labs and network operators allow us to get your product to market faster and with lower risk than anyone else.